بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Nurul Shifa Dengi Samun with metric number 1824732 Today I would like to present on the topic Political Reasoning focusing on the introduction What is Legal Reasoning? There are two principal kinds of questions that are asked in legal studies it is known as jurisprudence or also known as philosophy of law. The first one is what the law should be and what procedure for making law should be adopted. The second kind is what the law is and how it should be applied. Typically, philosophers are more interested in the former types of questions and practicing attorneys in the latter. Basically, legal reasoning is related to moral reasoning. It is based on some legal philosophy and also situated in some context and may involve prescriptive claims. For example, one must not act in a way that deprives others of their civil rights. So you can see in the example that I give in the slide. Okay, what can I conclude in the introduction is charges used to render laws directly. Today, may, many of our laws our statutes produced not by judges but by legislative bodies, codified in statute books and critically revised. However, the requirement of precedent still applies. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I'm Nabil Husna. I will explain about argument in legal reasoning. As you know, argument is a series of statements, some backed by evidence and some not, that are purposely present in order to prove or disprove in a given situation. An argument is a journey from problem to solution through the medium of the interpretation and application of legal rules to legal problem. In rigor reasoning, it relates to logic. For a lawyer, logic is the study of proposition and how conclusion may be correctly obtained from proposition in the process of reason argument. There are two types of logic which are deductive and inductive. In the legal reasoning, it have deductive, inductive, and analogy reasoning. Deductive reasoning, a closed system of reasoning from the general to the general or the particular, including cases where the conclusion is drawn out, it is therefore analytical. Meanwhile, inductive reasoning, an opening system of reasoning involving finding a general rule from particular cases and inconclusive, which suggests the end process of the legal judgment are inconclusive. Reasoning in analogy will explain by the next presenter. The next, deductive reasoning. In deductive reasoning, the argument has to follow and prescribe from a major premise, a major premises state a generality, a minor premises state a particularity, and conclusion. All this called syllogism. The subject in the major premise, why the, why the predicate, predicate in the minor premise, conclusion is necessary or compelled. The major way of attacking a deductive argument is through the premises. The conclusion is logically compelled and cannot be attacked. The major and minor premises, however, may be attacked for argument. For example, Plants grow in the daytime, cactus is plant, therefore cactus plant grow in daytime. For inductive isn't for inductive reasoning, the conclusion based on premises. Premises support the conclusion. The conclusion based on premises extend beyond the facts in the premise. The premise support the conclusion, it makes it probable, but it 
is possible that another conclusion exists. The premises only tend to support the conclusion. They do not compel it. The last one is relationship between deductive and inductive argument. Firstly, deductive argument requires extension by tracking through the process of inductive reasoning, starting with the minor premise of the deductive argument. Secondly, inductive reasoning involves putting forward a conclusion that seems strong based on inference that provide evidence in favor of one party. Lastly, the final arguments will consist of proposition or asset or assertion that will invariably be backed by the evidence. For some law problems, a cluster of arguments may need to be set up dealing with separate issues. That's all from me. I hope you can understand about it. Thank you. We will move to the next presenter. Argument by analogy. What is argument by analogy? Analogy is the most common form of argument in law. It begins by stating that two objects are observed to be similar by a number of attributes. It concludes that the two objects are similar with respect to a third attribute. The strength of such an argument depends upon the degree of relationship. To be clear, I give you example for argument by analogy. An argument from analogy attempts to set up a controversial case Y by claiming that it is analogous with a supposedly uncontroversial case X. Okay, in this situation, case Y, the verdict is unclear. Case X, an obvious verdict. The cases are similar in significant ways that is analogous. The verdict from the uncontroversial case, which is uh, case X, apply to the controversial case, which is case Y. Alright, uh, you imagine that you are walking past a pond and see a drowning child. Okay, there is some cause to you to help. Your nice shoes will be ruined. Should you help the child? Okay, the answer is obvious. Of course, you will help the child. So, this is the uncontroversial case. Uh, we move to the controversial case. Uh, if, you, uh, if you see the sign, uh, save the children, donate today. Are you obliged to help people who are suffering and dying from hunger and poverty, and poverty even if they are not near you? Hmm. The answer, you should not, uh, hmm. in the same time, you want to buy a new shoes. So, the answer is, you should not spend money on new shoes. When that money uh, could save a child on the side of the world. Okay, uh, for the summary, case S and case Y are analogous to each other. It argues that the controversial case Y should receive a verdict similar to the one given to the uncontroversial case X. In this topic, legal reasoning, there are some principles. The first principle is deals with the relevance of the similarities. Uh, this is an obvious application to legal arguments. The second and third principles are deals with the number of similarities and the nature and degree of this analogy is also applicable in legal reasoning. The fourth principle is the number of primary analogous. This is determines how well established a legal precedent is. Next uh, principle is diversity among the primary analogous. Uh, this is if, if a certain rule turns out in a broad range of cases, it provides a stronger precedent other things being occur than a rule that turns up in a narrow range of cases. And the last principle is the specific conclusion is the weaker the argument becomes. Assalamualaikum and hi. I am Siti Naziha binti Muhammad. And as for now, me and my partner Iki Husna will present to you about the subtopic of legal reasoning in real life. For your information, there are five elements in legal reasoning, which are 
issue, rule, facts, analysis, and conclusion. So, we bring to you an example which usually happens among the students. A student comes in and says that he faces some problems with his friend. He wants to know if he has a claim. Um, I'm facing some problems with my friends. Do I have a claim? Um, huh. Well, let me do some legal reasoning. So everyone, let's do some legal reasoning with me. So, what kind of problem you are facing? Um, he mocks and calls me by bad name and makes wholly unpleasant. From this slide, we can see that the first step in legal reasoning is we need to know the issue, which is what specifically is being debated. Next, we need to know the rule. What legal rule governs this issue? Whether is there a rule that covers this problem? Is the friend of the student engaging in conduct which is unlawful discrimination? What a rule is and where it comes from? Which means, in rule, we need to know if there is any rule that have been governed before with a similar situation with this issue. Aha! Uh -huh, school regulation! According to Rule X, he's been treated badly from a similarly situated person. Next, we need to know the facts. What are the facts relevant to this rule, which also known as material facts? The first one, he's being affected by his friend's behavior. Second one, the other friends are treated in different manner. Number four, analysis. Apply the rules to the facts. At this stage, if the material facts fit the law or regulation, school's regulations and other applicable laws should be done to solve the case. In this situation, he or the student was mocked by a bad name by his friends because he had a unique and weird name and has been bullied at the school. So he's been affected by his friends' behavior and has not received his rights according to the school regulation, while the other friends are treated in different manner. And number five, conclusion. Having applied the rule to the facts. So, what's the outcome? Well, based on the facts and according to the elements of the rules, I can say that his friends engage in unlawful discrimination and should be subject to disciplinary action and counseling session provided at the school. But at the school, at the school, school, and other applicable laws should be done to solve the case.